Good evening, everyone. Uh, at the outset, let me thank Dr. Mayur Agarwal and Team Hormone India for inviting me and giving me a topic that I <clears throat> feel that I'm reasonably passionate about, which is diabetes distress. I have no conflict of interest for today's conversation. I'm speaking in interest of patients with diabetes and how clinicians should be looking at reducing their distress. In my presentation over the next 13, 14 minutes, I would like to cover about the burden of diabetes distress in both patients with type 1 and type 2 diabetes, highlighting the differences between depression and diabetes distress, what should be the comprehensive approach to screening and diagnosis of diabetes distress, and what are the targeted areas and treatment approaches that we should consider for our patients with diabetes. This was the work done by the group led by Dr. Sanjay Kalra, and I was happy to be part of it, which came out with the paper on euthemia in diabetes clinical evidence and practice-based opinion from an international expert group. And this was this lovely term, euthemia, which is coined to again highlight the, the diabetes happiness and, and the lack of distress which we should move our patients towards when we treat a chronic condition like diabetes. So what really is euthemia in patients with diabetes? Let's understand this concept better. It refers to optimal mental state or mood and is an essential part of good health and well-being. The word euthemia is you is well and thymos is the emotion or the soul. So this was first defined by a Greek scholar, Democritus, as one who is satisfied with what is present and available, taking little heed of people who are envied and admired and observing the lives of those who suffer and yet endure. <clears throat> so <clears throat> Ethiopia could be broadly described as a state of positive mental health, eustress and psychological well-being. And that's largely the definition of health also as per WHO, which is both mental and physical health. Euthymia should also be considered as an important tool and target in diabetes care as the burden of mental health dysfunction is high in patients with diabetes, something which is rather ignored by most of us who treat. Let's look at why we are discussing this problem because there's a huge burden. When you're looking at the, the struggles of those living with diabetes, let, let's you know think for a minute for them and the problem that they go through living with diabetes on a daily basis. So diabetes-related emotional distress is associated with burden of self-care, interpersonal issues, emotional worries regarding how do you ability to cope with the illness and relationship with caregivers and healthcare professionals. And this is an ongoing cycle. It is not limited. It's something which happens through the life of the individual. How do we really define diabetes distress? Well, so diabetes distress is, is defined as an emotional response characterized by extreme apprehension, discomfort or dejection due to perceived inability in coping with the challenges and demands of living with diabetes. You will hear different words and expressions from people with diabetes who may say, you know, there's just no interest or in different colloquial languages, they'll say, they'll say, so you will hear these different expressions where it's not really depression or a major depressive disorder, but it is the burden of living with diabetes, the, the diet, the monitoring, the medications, and all of that. So let's look at the prevalence of, of diabetes distress. And there has been data put up, and this is looking at patients with type 2 specifically. Diabetes distress is a major concern in type 2 diabetes patients with a higher prevalence noted in the female gender and patients with comorbid depressive symptoms. And I think this is going to be extremely true even in a country like India, where women very often may prioritize the welfare of the male members in the house, often neglecting their needs, their, their, their health issues, and of course their mental health. The overall prevalence of diabetes distress, which was noted in a meta-analysis of 55 studies on this, this aspect and subject, was found to be about 36%. So every third patient that we see with diabetes with type 2 has some amount of diabetes distress and hence the need for us to discuss this more often just as we talk about the cardiac problems and renal issues and nephropathy and, and, and retinopathy and so on. We look at the prevalence of diabetes distress in adults and adolescents with type 1 diabetes. <clears throat> and These are some of the um, aspects of diabetes distress and their incidences. We'll talk about feeling powerless in type 1 patients and it has high as 72 percent. 
डिस्ट्रेस रिलेटेड टू मैनेजिंग दर डिजीज फोर्टी टू परसेंट पेशेंट है रिपोर्टेड हाइपोग्लाइसीमिया वरी अबाउट फोर्टी थ्री परसेंट नेगेटिव सोशल परसेप्शन थर्टी थ्री परसेंट फॉर टाइप वन इज दैट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग डिस्ट्रेस इन अबाउट फिफ्टी फोर परसेंट एंड सो ऑन देर आर डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ डिस्ट्रेस एंड वी शुड बी अवेयर सो दैट वी कैन पे अटेंशन एंड ट्राई मिनिमाइज दैट एज मच इज प्रॉफिबल पॉसिबल सो इन स्टडी प्रिवेलेंस एंड नाइन मंथ इंसिडेंस ऑफ एलिवेटेड डायबिटीज डिस्ट्रेस वे रिपोर्टेड एज फोर्टी टू परसेंट एंड फिफ्टी फोर परसेंट रिस्पेक्टिवली इन टाइप वन डायबिटीज पेशेंट टाइम पॉइंट इन इन द लाइफ ऑफ ए पर्सन विद डायबिटीज विच मे बी एसोसिएटेड विद इंक्रीज लेवल्स ऑफ डायबिटीज डिस्ट्रेस एंड दिस इज इंटरेस्टिंग एंड वर्थ नोटिंग बिकॉज दीज आर डेफिनेटली द द टाइम पॉइंट और इवेंट्स इन द लाइफ ऑफ ए पर्सन विद डायबिटीज विच वी नो are going to be likely to be associated with distress and we can pay more attention and help them minimize so around the time of diagnosis yes going through the emotions of denial anger fear and eventual acceptance that is the time for distress at the time of learning how to self manage diabetes and hence where we say sometimes you know trying to teach your patient newly detected with diabetes with all the aspects at the same time may be difficult if you want to talk to them about diet medication maybe learning insulin and monitoring for us who do this job on a daily basis it's fine for a patient who's newly detected if you're trying to teach them all at the same time many a patients may find it too overwhelming and hence we may need to plan as to what i want to really do at at each visit rather than trying to do everything and this completely depends on the patient's ability to learn and absorb and adhere and understand so it has to be individualized whenever there is a new complication onset it's going to again add to distress you know telling a patient that there is rise in your creatinine you've seen microalbuminuria there seems to be some aspect of leakage in the eye and so on is going to cause distress also when you switch patient's medications with it within the oral segment or addition of insulin is a kind of distress to the patient so you need to heed special attention to that and also when patients move from one doctor to another for whatever reason we may feel that patients are so called uh, doctor shopping but it's actually stressful for them also to go and see a new doctor and which is very often you see in the clinics that patients will come who never had high blood pressure but are found to have detected new blood pressure uh, on the higher side when they've come to see you because of the white coat hypertension and the anxiety that they have <clears throat> now we spoke about trying to say that diabetes distress is not really uh, clinical depression so it has to be Deferred from from major 